All, all right, right, it looks like we got all the subscribers yep. here. Yep, all three subscribers to the Bully Kid and Bullets Garage channel are here. Thank you guys for joining us in today's uh, sum up video of the year end. So we got another one, huh? Yeah, sadly we do. What is this, another podcast, I guess you can say? Uh, or uh, I would call mine a year end summary of all the fails that I have accomplished this year. And we had a lot of fails. Oh, you did. Not yeah, me. you were successful this year. Yeah. My shit went downhill. Yeah, so we're going to talk about all these fails this year, uh, what we did, what we didn't do that we said we were going to do on the last podcast. We're going to tell them the truth about the Lexus GSF, the things that we don't talk to you guys on video, but they're all going to come out on today. That's right. So stay tuned and keep watching. All right, man, take over. All right, well, let's start off by talking about taking the car out of storage. We took it out of the year. I was driving, it was pretty good. I didn't have any issues, right? I think you were on the Vossens already and the coils were on, yeah. Yeah, so that was, the car was fairly, fairly good. I had no issues at the beginning of the year. And then... Keep in mind, guys. It's freezing out there, man. Real cold. Real cold. Destruction has happened. Tragedy struck. And in, was it May? I think it was May. Man, you're jumping way fast forward, though. Before all that destruction and everything, took the car out of storage. You know, you ended up getting the eBay carbon fiber lip kits for the car. You got the side skirts. That's true. I totally forgot about you that. You got the front lip. And, you know, the quality wasn't that great out of the box with the eBay carbon fiber, but you did... Uh, Compounded, you did what? Compound polish, and then I ceramic coated it to make it have a lot more pop of the gloss and shine, which it was a night and day difference. If you guys watched that video, you could see the before and after of me polishing and compounding yeah. it. It shined a lot better. A lot better. This guy has a lot of experience with carbon fiber manufacturing, as you guys know. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so eBay lip kit, what's your opinion on that? Uh, what's what's the verdict, man? How, how much did you end up paying for the side skirts and the, the front lip? So the side skirts and the front lip all together were about $680 okay. for the whole kit. Looks good. Side skirts, I'm gonna clean this off, dust it off, wipe it down, make sure it's nice and clean. And yeah, this this is the install of the side skirts and the front lip. Um, What's a quality lip kit like that cost you from like whatever, Tom, Tom's Racing? Tom's Racing, just the front lip, I believe is around 1500. Side skirts are another 1500. And then rear diffuser, if you get, you know, if you get the full Tom's kit, it's about six grand. Which is crazy in Insane. my opinion. So, Anyway, long story short, what happened to your front lip anyway, driving down, you know, we towards were, the end of the season? You were with me. Oh. We were driving down uh, one of the roads here. Dark, it was late at night. The car in front of us, you know, higher car, drove over something. I saw it last second, couldn't swerve to avoid, and it hit the front lip and cracked it. And that's that, you know, as simple as that. You it know, happens to any kind of lip. Cheap, expensive, you exactly. never know. Exactly. So if you're low, if you're living the stance life, front lip i mean if you're dailying the car or anything like that it's up to you if you got the budget for a nice carbon fiber lip and it's going to get damaged you can replace it no problem fine but it's not worth it where we live you yeah, know the roads aren't that great so ebay lip kit looks great regardless and there's um, so many people running this exact lip kit and i've had people talk so much shit that it's an ebay lip kit it doesn't fit right i've seen at least 10 different gsfs running this exact kit on instagram yeah. so everybody's running it they like it so for all you haters that don't like it that's your call yeah i mean the only thing we did we i think originally the lip comes for a gs right yeah, it's, it's, it's meant for a gs 350 f sport yeah so you did have to do a little bit of cutting there to make it look proper yeah, to make it fit a little bit better but that's lesson learned um, there's actually a, another lip kit on eBay now that they produce that's specifically for RCF and GSF. I think it's about 400 bucks for the lip kit, but it actually fits perfectly. So if anything down the road, if this one gets too smashed up, we'll go look into that. But for now, lip kits are good. Can't complain. Can't complain. Okay. What's the next, what's the next thing, man? 
We're live. <laughs> <laughs> well, then what? What else happened, man? Well, I don't know, man. Look you through your videos. Feel. You got to look through your videos. I just want to talk about um, the noise, right? You've been having noise when you're driving. There's a lot of air turbulence while driving. And, and what do you think the reason for that air turbulence is? Well, the left driver's side window is making a lot of air and basically what i read on the forums it's making air i mean it's making noise <laughs> when you're driving from the air mm. right behind the mirror if you could see behind my brother's head there's a small black piece that people say air gets in between it and that's what causes the extra wind noise so i'm going to look into that in the spring and i'll make a video of that probably just need some proper double-sided tape to close off that seal better but it's super annoying like you're driving 50 miles an hour and you legit hear air like gushing from the driver's side window. It's crazy. And now, do you think, because I mean, those mirrors are big anyway. You always were complaining how big the mirrors yeah, are. Yeah, they're huge. But uh, do you think the noise, the air turbulence got worse after you installed the lip, the front lip? No, or, no. And so the lip no, has nothing to do with it. Because I was thinking nothing. maybe, you know, it's uh, not approved by the wind specialist and it's causing more turbulence or something like that. But okay, guys, you heard it. It won't interfere with extra noise or anything. Yeah, definitely not. Uh, the next thing I do I do want to talk about are the Voss and wheels. Mm -hmm. You know, the wheels are great. Everything's good. Uh, but the tires, what tires were you running on them? Nitto Invos. Oh, man. The dog's licking the mic. It's going <laughs> to sound real good. Wait, so let's say that again. Uh, what tires are you running on the Vossens? So we're running Nitto Invo tires, which were about $900. Fairly grippy tire, but the sidewall is extremely, extremely soft, yes. and you could feel it. The car just does not feel stable from the back end at all. Um, that's when, that's what I wanted to touch up on because I know you mentioned that during turns and stuff, yeah. and you feel even though you have coilovers, you have stiffer, supposedly stiffer and uh, better suspension. The tires are a soft and weak point during the you know yep, when the you're moving the process, car around. Yeah. So it's like. It's weird because it's a race tire, you know, it's a sportier street tire with low tread count. What is it, like 200, 300? Yeah, 260 and then 220 in the front. So, so yeah, it's, 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 it's down there, you know. You know, I ran the, you know, those tires all summer long. And then when winter or when fall came, I put these back on. And I was going to talk with this camera, man. And I was driving with the, you know, the stock OEM wheels and tires with the Michelin Super Sport tires. And night and day difference you could get off the on-ramp or off-ramp and you could be leaning into that corner and it feels solid the the, uh, the nitto invos they just keep bouncing around every bump you hit so when those wear out we're going definitely back to michelin the 4s tire yeah so i've ran a lot of tires and wheels on my vehicles too and you know it's crazy how much a wheel an offset um, a stretch or going with a wider tire for the wheel it plays a huge role on the setup of the car, the stability. So it's it's really hard to finesse and get it perfect. You know, like who knew? You know, you're getting a, a lower tread count tire, you're getting mm -hmm. wider rims and tires, and essentially they slightly handle worse than the factory setup. Yeah. You know, so yeah. So it's hard when you're trying to mod modify cars, and that's where the thing is. A lot of people that modify cars always demodify their cars in a way depending on what they do so it, it's hard all right guys this is it this is what you've been waiting for for all these months it is pouring rain i'm out here in the rain getting wet to provide this content for you so 15 mil spacer perfect i'm sorry 10 mil spacer you can see it right there 10 mil spacer looks pretty flush with the fender it's not poking too much nothing is rubbing look how good that looks then we move it back back looks pretty good too no rubs yet so we could maybe go a tad bit lower but you know when it's not raining i'm gonna figure all that out but for now as it sits i mean i have no complaints it actually looks pretty damn decent with the way it's sitting right now let's move over to the passenger side give you that angle view look at that and you know those nittles are I think stretched just a hair 
yeah, a little bit. on those rims. So you think if they would be stretched, you know, that, that uh, sidewall would be stiffer and such, you know, because I've mm -hmm. ran bigger tires on a smaller rim, and that really degrades the handling of the car. It's, it's just no feedback whatsoever. So you think you're going to get a smaller tire on a wider rim, you know, like a stretch, and you get, you know, good feedback. But, yeah, it's still giving you problems. So, I mean, if you guys... Because I know you, you had only a few choices for the tire sizes you were going to run, right? That's why we went with these tires, Yeah, I mean, I wanted to run a conservative setup, so I knew I wasn't going to rub and destroy the quarter panels and the fenders. Yeah, don't... So. If you guys are rolling quarter panels and you guys got salt yeah. or anything... I highly it. do not recommend rolling your fenders because they are not going to look smooth when you roll it. You, any car you see that has rolled fenders, you see the metal you know bent and curved it's it's just not a good but then look. it just starts rusting yeah and it starts rusting you know, it's just issues with that so i'm not rolling or cutting yeah. or anything and all your cars had rust on them before from running stand setups or anything yeah because we just, rolled fenders on the other cars and it was just it was a nightmare rolled or rubbed you know if you get yeah. the wrong setup and you're rubbing it's it's just a slow process of of cancer for your car so yeah we went pretty safe with that we got control arms too mm -hmm. so worst case scenario we can camber in um, so yeah, that's the deal with those tires, guys. Um, be careful. Do a lot of research. You know, honestly, I'm, I cheaped out on my tires on my eighth gen Honda Civic. I bought them off China on eBay for like 200 bucks for all four. Because he's cheap. But uh, but honestly, tires are very important. Probably one of the most important things on the vehicle. That's what's keeping you guys in contact with the road. So. Pay a little extra, get a little better tire. The car's gonna feel better, smoother, respond better. After all, that's what we're all trying to do, you know. Improve, improve the car. Like I said, not degrade the car. All right, now let's get this video going. Let's talk about the major upset which happened next on the GSF. My Jack fail, guys. Yeah, Jack fail video. <laughs> that shit went worldwide. Became worldwide famous, but I got no money for it. So, I don't know how uh, famous you got, but... Uh, man, it's, people it's, knew me. Yeah, I mean, that's the guy. You went to a car meet. Anyway, we're going to play you a clip right now of this little thing. For those of you that don't know what we're talking about. But essentially, he was lifting his car. And I'm telling you guys, getting coilovers on a vehicle and getting uh, wheels and you're trying to perfect the stance of the vehicle, you're going to be raising that car up, and, adjusting um, stuff every single day. Yeah, yeah, the whole summer, man, is going to be like adjusting stuff if, if you're a perfectionist, you know. So that's essentially what you were doing. You lifted this car so many times and it was just another day of you lifting yeah. the car, you know, nothing, nothing to it, doing nope. the same old crap. Well, the reason I was lifting it was to do the secondary cat delete on the car. Yeah, That's yeah, the reason yeah. I was lifting. The coils were all set up per perfectly. It was good. I was like, okay, the next mod, secondary cat delete. And, and that what cat delete was what? What company was that from? PPE pipes. PPE. Yeah. But, so basically what, you know, people are saying where I messed up was I backed the car up on the ramps first. And then I started lifting the heaviest part of the car, which is the front, which you should do it the opposite way. You always this camera buddy. You always lift the front of the car, and then you go on to lift the back since it's lighter. And I did it in reverse. I had two hockey pucks stacked on top of each other to clear the lips that I installed, the side skirts, and just destruction hit and caused just a spiral of effects that went downhill. For now, I gotta break the news to my wifey and my brother and I'm sure I'm gonna get an earful from Man, here. That thing happened, it happened so fast. He sent me the damaged picture of the car and I thought it was a joke at first. But yeah, it was real, man. Essentially, yeah, like you said, you had 
There was a lot of issues with this car. It's a pain in the butt from my understanding to jack these things up. Yep. The pinch welds suck, but you know, um, the car is a heavy pig, first of all. So you bought Z01 add-ons. Let's talk about the Z01 add-on jack points or whatever it is. If you guys don't know what it is, uh, I can get it right now. You keep talking. <laughs> Yeah, so basically I had the ZL1 jack pads front and back, and so I got the hockey puck underneath the pad, which I felt with my hand. It was perfectly underneath, but as you can see, those areas are very smooth. There's no grooves on top. That's the side that mounts to the bottom, and that's the top right there. So as I'm jacking the car up, you know, the, just the, the hockey puck slipped and crushed the car and that's why I removed these suckers because you know they just didn't help with anything yeah it's just too much friction areas the fact that you had two hockey pucks it's just you know things can slip yeah, I mean, um, and the worst part about this car Lexus only recommends jacking it from the rear differential okay which is doable if you're doing from the rear but on the front they say to jack it from the front cross member which is so far behind the front wheels that there's no way that you could get a front jack underneath that car, even if you drive it up on something. So I don't know how they expect you to jack it up from there. What they expect you to do is go take to, it to, the dealer. to take it to the dealer, pay up, and yeah. you know, don't do any work on your vehicle. It seems like Lexus doesn't want you to have any fun and do any work on the cars. And let's talk, I don't even want to talk about it, but because I'm jumping from topic to topic. And no, we can't have him biting on that. <laughs> Charlie. Nope. Come here. So, anyway, I'm talking about, you know, Lexus is the one should have fun. Before we go back to the, to the car fail thing, it's that stability control and traction control thing, man. Like, you bought a car, V8, a lot of power, and, you know, all these lights keep coming on every time you try to drift it a little bit kick the rear end out do a burnout it's just yep. a pain in the it's ass a pain it's so 50 stupid. step process just to turn off traction control or something okay so parking brake is activated let's get to it i'm going to put on the brake press this down start the car and i'm waiting for that caution sign once i see it i'm going to start the process caution sign e-brake out e-brake in e-brake out e-brake in foot pedal out foot pedal in foot pedal out foot pedal in e-brake out e-brake in e-brake out e-brake in e Foot pedal off, foot pedal on, foot pedal off, foot pedal on. And unfortunately, it did not work this time. So, like, come on, man. People bought this car to have some fun. Yeah, but and you know, like... Lexus, Toyota brand, Toyota's all about safety and keeping the customers safe. And so is Lexus for the most part, because most people that buy Lexuses are older folks and they're all, you know, they're standard sedans or SUVs. So they're safety systems are very integrated into the car and so same thing with the lexus rcf gsf <laughs> yeah well that's a fail i think that's, that's stupid i mean even if you go to the track you're dealing with so much bs yeah, like, removing the traction making sure it's off you know so you can launch the car properly and get a better time it's just it's just a headache. And yeah, like the car will not let you do a burnout. So if you're in the drag strip trying to do a burnout in the box, you have to do the pedal dance in order to do it. And, and it's not easy, right? It's not easy. So half the time you have to turn the car on and off three, four times while you're doing the process to get the, you know, the car unlocked to do a burnout. And sometimes it doesn't work. You just give up because you're frustrated. You know, who's going to keep starting the car on and off to get this damn process to work? So it's just so stupid. <laughs> So let's jump back. Let's jump back into the car fail video. Um, you know, the jack essentially wasn't really moving forward when you were jacking the mm -hmm. car up. The, you probably screwed up jacking, get the, the, the back wheels up first and such. But you know, shit happens. You know, you live, you learn. Um, we let's talk about the the next step yeah, was. So, I mean, the steps were. You know, I'm like, I have to go through the insurance because this is gonna cost money. Shit has to be painted, door has to be replaced. Who knows what has to be replaced? I'm like, the only way to go about this is to go through the insurance. So, my wife had a friend who works at Gerber Collision, who is a she was like the adjuster or whatever. So she's like, 
you know, we'll take good care of you. We'll, you know, take pictures, give you step-by-step -step updates of everything that's being done, yada, yada. So I'm like, you know, it's somebody I know on the inside. So I'm like, I took a chance and I went there, you know. And uh, as far as the repairs went, they repaired the door. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. They replaced the door. They replaced the lower rocker panel. And then they replaced the side skirt on the right side. And basically did they some just, paint they work. They just did a lot of work. You know, they did a you know, door, blah, 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 blending. You know, the typical bullshit that nobody wants to deal with. Yeah, but um, I want to give where credit is due. The actual repair of the door and the pinch welds underneath that were repaired was a great job. Everything came out solid. Where the point that failed was the paint job. Correct. Well, that's the most visual thing you see. So, yes, you know. and it was an absolute disaster. Yeah, so uh, Lexuses have like a crazy four-stage paint, right? I mean, this I know... This one's a three-stage. Whatever it is, I know I watched a documentary and they were saying like these paint jobs are, you know, high-end paint mm -hmm. jobs, you know, it's not a one-stage, two-stage. I'm sure there's pearl metallic and all that bull. Um, and I've been getting into some painting myself over the last the year. And, you know, I kind of been going through the steps myself with a cheap Rust-Oleum paint. But essentially, they had to paint these things multiple times. There was runs in some areas. There was uh, contamination well, yeah, with, like, trash. dust and stuff that was clear-coated over. On the lower part, there was just hella scratches. It's Wet like, sanding marks. I don't know how they were buffing everything. Um, the, the way they taped everything off didn't seem that great because you had you know you know how when you wet sand they had well all that debris all over the grill or yeah. all over the inside of the engine you mm -hmm. could see it so it wasn't masked off that well and you know we're not professionals this is our opinion and this let's put a disclaimer right now that you know we're entitled to something anyway we're very disappointed essentially you had to go back and forth between the body shop you, you even were taking the fender off yourself because you didn't want to go back to the shop so they can scratch up some other stuff. Mm -hmm. And long story short, you know, after they painted everything, it was like, okay, let's just, that's it. You know, it's, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. It's we just, it's just okay. It's not perfect by any means, but I'm like, you know, it's, by the time that I've been going back and forth, it was almost a month yeah. of going back and forth. And so it was like almost end of June. And I'm like, dude, I need my car yeah, back. Like like, summer's right. Summer's, summer's here and you're over. not driving like, it. I'm, yeah, so a lot of time was wasted with the shop and just getting it fixed but yeah and it, then you took it to chicago auto pros for a full detail yes you know and single step paint correction again and they even said they tried their best to get the fenders you know polished out as best as they could and they said the fenders were really really bad yeah and you know the the paint match isn't the best i know paint matching is always difficult yeah. but you know a lot of people are going to say that the rear quarter panel rear door because it was repainted twice just nothing made sense, you know, they, they they just wanted to push these cars out. And even if you look at the areas that were painted, you know, they first spray a sealer, which is like when you're painting a wall in your house and you got a green wall, you want to seal it first with a solid color to put the next color on or the first color is going to bleed through. So the sealer they sprayed on, you could see that there's, it's not a smooth spray, spray out. You see these little square, like pixely areas on the paint. So even though maybe the paint looks good, that first base coat, which is the most important, isn't as smooth and doesn't lay down great. So if you look at the car, if you look at the car in certain areas, you see a pixelated area, you know, pixelated fender or, or body panel, which just looks like crap in my opinion. So, you know, we have a local body shop by our house, uh, which, which is called Auto Art very popular shop yep. uh, they do high-end cars that's where essentially we were gonna go first but yep. you know you got a hook up there so we were thinking blah 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 but this is at the end of the day this says don't do business with friends or family or people you know mm -hmm. you know because now that even though the job kind of isn't the greatest you know you don't want to pursue that because they're your buddies or something like that so we were gonna go to Chicago Auto Pros and actually another youtuber legit street cars that is also in Chicago Auto Art, not Chicago Auto Pros. Auto art. Auto art, yeah, my bad. 
out of our, you know, legit street cars. He, he's another YouTuber. Yeah. And we're not just at any body shop today. We're at Mancuso Auto Art in Glenview, Illinois. And these guys work on a lot of cool cars. Yep. Chicago, and he takes his car over there all the time. We actually saw one of his videos after you went to Gerber. Yeah, I'm And like, he's like, dang, why didn't we damn, go there? Damn, I should have went there. <laughs> so they're a great shop. Another great shop around the Chicagoland area is, I believe it was called AJ's Auto Body or something. One of my buddies with a BMW went there. They did a great repair. Uh, they're a little further out, I think, in Palatine, but uh, I heard great things about them. And I work at a, I work at another place, and this one lady got her car painted, the whole car, because of hail damage. And I'm, I was really impressed with the quality of the work they did, and I actually asked her for the body shop. So that's called European Body Shop, and it's on 4080 North Broadway in Chicago. Fantastic job, the clear coat and everything was fantastic. Really impressed compared to Gerber and what they did. Because remember, Gerber is like a like a Jiffy Lube. There's so many of them, you know, mm -hmm. the quality from one to the other can range so bad. So I'm sure experiences between one or the other is gonna be big. Anyway, mm -hmm. that's the story. It, yeah, was, it was the biggest headache ever. Biggest um, headache ever, longest time consuming headache. Just... Yeah, and it sucks because like, you know, you, you already know the original paint is the best quality mm -hmm. it's the it's the strongest bond to the panel and such so it sucks when you got to repaint the car you're really losing a lot of value to yeah. you know but it is i mean it, it's not you still got a clean title it's not they're, like they can't salvage the car from what it is and a lot of people saying oh the resale value you that's, know whatever. that's a good point that you brought up i actually asked uh, alan to give me a carfax report off of this so i want to see what it what it says because it might say you know rebuild or something yeah, it's not going to say rebuild rebuild is when they would s say the damage is more than the car's worth. Or oh. they, they give you a salvage title first, then you rebuild it, mm. then it's a rebuild title. Okay, yeah, so no, I, it's a I clean asked, him, title. asked him to run the Carfax so I could see what it says. So yeah. I'll update you guys on that in the next video. But let's move on, okay? So we got the car back. The next step was to let the paint cure before I took it to Chicago Auto Pros. So we went ahead, me and my buddy Adam, who helped me up welding this uh, exhaust, we did the secondary cat delete. And man, did it wake up the car. Oh yeah, it sounded great. It was so deep and beastly sounding. On the exterior, I was fully in love with it. I mean, amazing sound for basically just muffler delete and secondary cat delete. And we'll put a clip in there right now. Yeah. But uh, so we got the car, I've driven it all summer with the secondary cat delete and the muffler delete and I loved it. On the interior, yes, it was hella loud. Um, and you know, some there was some little vibrations cause you're not running any mufflers, which is to be expected, but the sound was phenomenal, okay? So after the secondary cat delete, took it to Chicago Auto Pros, they did a single step paint correction. We already talked about that. Yep, I brought it back and I ceramic coated the car once again with Crystal Serum Light, which is a very good uh, ceramic coating, way better than the Adams that I used previously. And then I topped it off with two layers of EXO. Phenomenal beating, the car stays clean. You just gotta basically hit it with a pressure washer and it stays clean. So it was, it was a great, great product. I highly recommend it. So one thing we did, you know, after all this, and you got a RR racing intake as well. You had the carbon fiber mm -hmm. tube, and you know, we we finally went to the dyno, right? Yep. This year we went to the dyno. Um, we got pretty good numbers. It was a dyno jet, dyno jet dyno, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you put down, I think it was four ten or four eleven was the 4 highest. Four eleven and fourth gear was the highest. Fourth or fifth? Fourth. Fourth. Oh, yeah, God. the highest and fifth was. 402, I believe. Yeah. But still, pretty good numbers to the wheel. Yeah, and a lot of people. Base. Let's tell a lot of people what wheel and uh, base horsepower is. You know, a lot of people said, oh, 410 horsepower. They claim 468 yeah, horsepower. Yeah. Like, I don't know. A lot of people still don't know what wheel horsepower is. That means it comes out of the engine. It goes through your drivetrain. It goes through all the moving components of the car. And 
that power to the wheels is what's left over how much power leaves the engine and leaves the tire you know yeah. a lot of people still get confused on that yeah so that's so, wheel horsepower yeah if we calculate it to crank horsepower it's probably right around that 460 whatever 467 you know? yeah. yeah so crank horsepower is what the manufacturer says the engine itself makes probably on an engine engine dynamometer yeah exactly not pushing the power to the wheels that's a different it's drive train loss 10 to 15 percent you know correct yeah so we did that run with my uh muffler delete and the uh, rr racing intake and uh, that's it that's where only mods on the car which were decent numbers couldn't complain i mean it is what it is you can't yeah for, for no two for basically no, no tune basically no real mods yeah. it, it was it was pretty good uh let's see then we had more issues with the car remember how my brakes were making all this noise yeah so there was a lot of noise issues this season a lot of car. issues I it's mean, mind-boggling it's just crazy for alexis and we just had a we have a new noise issue now that he'll talk about but yep. it started off with clunking in the front then you know you had to double check everything make yeah sure i was checking the ends, coils, sway bar and links. everything that was making sure it was all tight which it was and then one day you know i you know took the wheels off and i'm tightening the brake calipers making sure everything's tight and i kind of wiggle the brake pads with my fingers the front ones were slightly loose which and the way i was hearing the sound it sounded like it was coming from the front but it was honestly from the back just with my fingers i can move the pads up and down and slightly side to side no, once you get it going. What it was, was my rear brake calipers, or rear, blah, blah, blah. it was my rear brake pads, they, this camera. that had so much play in them that even Greg was mind boggled, how could there be so much play? Like this must be defective, It's whatnot. ridiculous, it's ridiculous. It's big, this is a big brake kit essentially, the way it's manufactured. It's not like your everyday daily driver kind of vehicle. But the way these things are made, man, I'm just, it's so basic and cheap, and there's so much movement. Yeah, like, I mean, again, a reminder, we're not running OEM pads, we're running Tom's racing I'm pads. Racing, but, but, you know, any manufacturer is going to have the same specs, essentially, but yeah. these things were making so much noise. But the funniest thing is, remember, we put... Wow. 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 Put the stock pads in, and the stock pads were also moving. Oh, they were, huh? Yeah, so, I mean... It was just weak, weak, weak manufacturing Lexus yeah, or, so or Brembo or whoever made these things. I had to do some, you know, modifications, kind of bend the hardware clip a little bit backwards so it could have more tension on the pads. And we're, we're not even going to tell them how we fixed this. Yeah, problem. Um, <laughs> we fixed it. It's fixed. It's good to go now it's quiet so let's just say it's not sae approved <laughs> basically not <laughs> but yeah you had you had other issues before right was it always the brakes because there was some other issues we last had. year Clunking. was the sway bar link was loose that's what we were trying to diagnose the sway bar link this and that and i'm telling you it's just noise after noise and you know and more reasons why you gotta jack the car up take things off jack it down jack yep. up jack down so, check it whatnot so we got so sick of this you know we were hoping quick checks would sponsor him after the jack fail and something you actually reached out to them man. i messaged them i'm like did you see my video i need your help so this doesn't yeah. happen again <laughs> they didn't even write back guys yeah man so then businesses you know <laughs> anyway you got quick jacks you, know, I got you, quick you invested jacks. it with your own money you know and I did. how do you like them so far i mean honestly i think i should have invested a long time ago because it helps so much in lifting the car safely and being under it safely working and, and on evenly, it and evenly know? and without flexing the chassis you know it, the, the initial setup to get the jacks aligned under the car perfectly takes a little bit of time but once you get it aligned you just press the button you go all the way up and you're safe even right. you know you saw it work it's, yeah, I it's saw nice it one time. gives you a lot of room underneath the car when you go out to the second lock position so we have no complaints with it it's a yeah. very good product yep much recommended um much safer yeah i mean like you said the, the heavier the car the pain the bigger the pain it is mm -hmm. to lift you know yep. that's why i like dealing with smaller cars not v8s fully full, full sedans it's a lot more weight you know yeah. the more weight the harder everything is 
What else we got going on? So let's talk about some of the stuff that we remo removed off the car. Oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. coming to the end of the year here, um, I ended up selling my RR Racing, the, the carbon fiber elbow. Essentially, we went back to stock because I told you to go back to stock. Basically. We needed some money for the quick jacks. Basically. So we so, sold some of the parts. Yep. And uh, yeah. And we were happier after. Exactly. So we just move on from that part. So, next issue, my exhaust started leaking. Yeah. Exhaust leak, check engine light kept coming on. Oh, yeah. So, I Lexus. had... <laughs> I had the secondary cat delete. I did that in June, and then, like, in October, September, boom, check engine light comes on one day. Uh, code was, like, PO420, which was basically exhaust leak. Um, so, we looked underneath, and sure enough... It was leaking on both flanges. It was hard to see, but it was then, hard to see. But on once... a cold start, I think, and a cold day, you see that air hissing yeah. out through there. So, like, I was mind blown because, you know, what technically we did reuse old gaskets, but I needed to buy new gaskets, take off the old, replace them. We used some gasket maker, and it closed it up, and it was good. It was good, and he said, "I'm gonna." Um, this is never getting unbolted again. I'm never, putting hella ever, sealers ever. on, hella gasket maker. And then next week, he's like, hey, then, I'm ordering a new exhaust. And then next week, I'm like, Greg, there's so many rattles in the car. I need you to come help me find where this rattle's coming from inside the dashboard. Oh, yeah, we took the dashboard apart because yep, so. the dashboard was rattling. See. Also, and it's like I come to his house and I see the whole car apart, the dash, the, the whole like, radio was out, the man, center vents were out, everything was out. This is a Lexus, like, man. This ain't no Honda Civic. I'm like I can't deal with rattles. I gotta find where this rattle's coming from. I'm telling he you, was, man. He, noises, all these noises. <laughs> I hate noises, guys. I need to. My hearing is too good. That's the problem. Yeah. So we couldn't find the noise. It, you know, it was probably from just the frequency of the muffler delete, kind of, you know resonating resonating throughout the car throughout the noise. metal chassis it was cold so just more frequency metal is you know harder so the next choice was to just change exhausts and i got a joe z catback from modern japan my boy lou hooked it up yeah what do you think about it i think it was a lot of money but the fact that is it's it's all one company it's not at cost because again we had a custom catback exhaust originally you know yes. it's it's there's less r d involved it's just a welder a fabricator that's doing the work himself so it's not going to be as you perfect know, perfectly aligned as well created compared to a, a company that can r d but yeah it's a, it looks great you know you got the what is it uh secondary cat delete mm -hmm. full exhaust Muffler. you got mufflers resonators with v bands no those no no i'm talking about the oh Josie. the Josie, yeah the Josie. yeah so the Josie has basically no secondary cats it has resonators and mufflers and it sounds amazing i love it perfect exterior sound sounds great it's it suits the car much better because the other one was just like uh, More like a America. hey i got a liberty walk you know that's what it was trying to it was trying too hard to be what it was but it did sound great in my opinion yeah but i love the sound but overall with the quieter interior of the new josie it's it's good you know it's a good balance between power and speaking of power the car felt so much faster once we put the josie on it was night and the day difference. Dino the said butt dino said 50 horse, 50 torque <laughs> on the spot. Yeah. And what we thought it was is because there was basically no back pressure since we removed the mufflers. So no back pressure, you lose low end torque. That's that's hands it's down just, given it's just standard. just airflow science. You yeah. know, velocity and momentum of the air moving out and back pressure all play a role of power. Uh, exhaust size and tubing and, and length all play a role same thing with intakes you know mm -hmm. whether back in the day when you had a cold air or a short ram you gain either low end power or, or top end, end power yeah. even with my car my eighth gen civic i have a stock exhaust right now feels great down low once i put a si muffler on there 
the top end increased a lot, but the low end died out on me. And then when I did a no muffler at all, you know, I did just an open axle back. There was no power, <laughs> dude, like no low end power. So I know what you're saying, man. You know, you and open that's... her up more without forced induction or anything, it's it's not worth it. Yeah. You gotta you gotta consider the back pressure on a naturally aspirated yeah, you car. You sure do, because I'm telling you guys, the car with this big five liter V8 felt slow as hell from anything below 3000 rpms and for city driving that's where i always was and it just felt terrible and like, again that is just our opinion <laughs> <laughs> i was like why does this car feel so slow like i couldn't put my finger on it but we put the josie on we went for one pull still recording right yeah, yeah. it looks 36 minutes <laughs> <laughs> we went for a couple you know we went for a drive i did the first pull and we we're both like looked at each other like okay no memory left so talk to yours now. Wait, hold on. Hold on, we gotta adjust some stuff, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. GoPro, stop recording. Okay, my card's full. So let's just connect this to your thing. We'll pause it. Uh, diagnostics. No, not diagnostics. I'm just gonna run, where the hell do I have that? You keep talking, but I'm going to get secondary audio in case this isn't picking up. For sure. Anyway, we installed the Josie exhaust, went for a drive, and we're just like, why does this car feel so different? So much more low-end torque, and I was in love. Like, sure, it was not as loud on the exterior, but it had a, it's a clean, smooth, non-raspy tone, which I 100% love. It sounds great on the inside. It sounds great on the outside. The car has power and torque. So I was extremely happy with the exhaust. I highly recommend it. If you're looking for a subtle sound, I highly recommend it. So hit up my boy Lou from Modern Japan if you're interested. Then we got this in and I'm like, okay, we got to go to the dyno. Oh yeah, we wanted to dyno it. I'm like, see. am I making more torque? Am I making more power? So we went to the dyno, same place, same... <laughs> car did make more horsepower i was you know pleasantly surprised um i'll post a picture of the you know the final numbers right here but the car basically fifth pull second the second fifth gear pull and the car made i think 420 ish horse and the, the torque basically the peak torque stayed very consistent like 389 ish so the car Right there, it made power on the dyno, it made power in my butt dyno, so I'm very impressed with the exhaust, and I'm very, very happy and pleased with it. And so is you, so is my wife, so is everybody. Sounds good. Yeah, it's not bad, not bad. Still slow, but yeah, you know, for what it is, for, you know, yeah, the for, car is slow. for just a V8, little, little five yeah, liter, five liter V8 that it's just not bad. gets 14 miles a gallon, it's, it's pretty slow, <laughs> what are you, you going to do, you know? So the dyno went through. What else we got going on? Basically, you still, okay. Hold on. You still got an AEM intake that we're trying to sell. AEM elbow. K and N. K and N intake. K and N intake. It's a K and N elbow that I'm trying to sell. If anybody wants to hit me up, give you a good price for it. And then we're also trying to sell your old catback or custom catback yeah, exhaust. Yeah. So if anybody is interested in basically from catback, my original mid pipe that's been modified with the muffler delete let me know also it is for sale local would be best because shipping is probably going to be a yeah, nightmare no shipping on there man yeah so if anybody's interested message me below or send me a message on instagram and i'll uh we'll see what we could get figured out for you guys then basically after that what well, just drove the car everything was good i had no rattles then the car no, well, I did an install first, then I found this rattle. So, a couple weeks later, I'm on Facebook, browsing Facebook, and a fellow RCF, GSF owner, posted up for sale his uh, Stance Cup Kit. Oh, yeah, the Cup Kit. So, I'm like, 
knew this cup kit is like 750 this guy was selling it for 550 i'm like if you ship it to me for 500 i'll take it so he, he agreed send it up the next day i got the cup kit which if you don't know what the cup kit is check out my video but it's basically it looks like a cup that you put on top of your coilover spring which connects to an airline and a compressor and basically you hit a switch and it lifts your car up enough to clear driveways it's essentially air suspension but a lot of people have it confused it's not an airbag it's not airbag yeah, suspension it's, yeah it's not airbag because you don't drive with it's the cup lifted. kit yeah. lifted it's only used for getting in and out of steep driveways exactly. stuff like that not to be men driven up high because, because once you air up you're at you're basically compressing the spring so if your spring uh, rate is like 14 kilograms per whatever inch that thing once you air up it compresses the spring so much that the much spring becomes spring so stiff so you cannot drive with it on yeah so um, and when you air down you still keep your regular drivability yep. of your coilover so yep, you still is. get the good quality handling because a lot of people say if you get airbags you know the, the handling and the track setup mm -hmm. isn't as good you know they can't it it's, doesn't beat a coilover and you know that's not what we have here we have the coilovers for your your aggressive driving you know that that quality and, yep. and suspension and then geometry. we have the cup kit for the convenience of going cup up kit and down is stuff. for the car not being a track car just being in a city car lowered so like you said you just air up when you need it and it's you know once you air up it's aired up you know it doesn't have that that squishiness as a bag does you know what i'm Correct. saying so yeah you don't drive with it on it's just when you need it you air it up and that's it so it was nice it's, it worked out good yeah, you, you, it works you, good i'm able to pull into your driveway now yeah it's it's nice the fact that you know you don't have to screw up more lips when you're going on car shows or something yeah. like that yeah and now, uh, now i could basically before if i was going downtown to eat for dinner or an occasion i'd be like okay i can't take my car because there's probably going to be a steep driveway or a steep parking garage entrance and i won't be able to get in now i could be like we're going to air up and we could go wherever we want so we're not as limited uh, so Which let's keep great. fast forward because this is getting long. <laughs> yeah, so let's let's keep going. As soon as I installed this uh, cup kit, um, I started driving and I started hearing what sounded like a rear suspension clunk. Another one. Another one. Another one. <laughs> Another one. Another one. Another one. Another one. And I was like, don't copyright that, okay? <laughs> Now we're gonna play the music video right when we said that. I don't have. I'm not good at editing. I, I will edit this. You'll edit right. this thing, edit bro. This. So I start driving the car, and I what sounds to me like a rear right suspension clunk when I'm going under low speeds and uneven angulations. When I'm driving straight, going over a speed bump, there's no noise. So it's just. It was mind-boggling like what the hell could it be when it's only making noise when the car is going from left to right shifting i first disconnected both rear sway bar links sound is still there okay i checked all the bolts and nuts on the suspension you know the coils the... i gotta stop you right there because you still do all the work by yourself on the car you lifted it like i said trillions of times I... if if you're a tuner if you like doing this shit, you know buying all these aftermarket parts and you don't know what you're doing. You got to take it to the shop for every noise. You're going to pay a lot of money, a man. This is going to cost you a lot of diagnostic fees mm -hmm. and all that. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So, you know, it's cold. I'm under this car. We're looking for it. Greg came over to help me. He, I stuck his ass in the trunk. We went driving around the block to try and figure out the noise. And he even couldn't pinpoint it himself. So I'm like, let's just take apart. Let's take apart the rear coilover. You know, just make sure it's, you know, the spring is good. To make sure the shock itself is good. Pain in the ass. Pain in the ass. So we took it apart. And lo, lo and behold, another, never, nothing ever goes smooth when you're working on a car. The freaking top mount bolt stripped the threads on the actual shock and the, the bolt itself stripped. Like yep. on a coil that's a year old. Yep. Mind blown. We must, I mean, we were impacting it. The only thing I could think of was. Yeah, but we were impacting it, removing uh, it. Yeah, which but it's fine. The only thing I could think of was the impact slightly went off, you know, to the side and it cross threaded. But 
ended up having to fix that, which was not well, a luckily, delay. Luckily, we bought a thread repair kit, yes. and we fixed the threads, and we were able to put a new bolt on. Because Correct. If, if you screwed up the threads to that point where and they're not usable, now you got to go you gotta, hit up your boy, you Mod, gotta, in Japan, you, and we'll you, see how, how much he tells you to pay, you know? Cause, yeah, because that's they basically have to replace the shock itself. And for those of you people that went through this before, I'm curious, because are they going to sell you... Uh, one coil, or do they have to sell you a whole kit again? You know, if they have to sell you a whole kit, I it's, it's going to be a pain. It's probably just... I don't know. Because, you know, when I originally got the rear suspension, the, the adjustment was underneath the car. So I just sent them out the rear, too, and they yeah, converted that. it. So, I mean, I'm sure they could have done the same thing. Yeah, but, but it's still unfortunate, but we were fortunate to fix yeah, it. Yeah, we were fortunate to fix it. We put everything back together. Sound is still there. Surprise, surprise. So then I posted, uh, I'm like, I basically I was fed up with the car, okay, guys? I'm like, I'm sick and tired of lifting this car. I'm sick and tired of doing shit to this car. I just want to drive it and enjoy it. And it just kept, something always kept freaking happening, okay? So I took the car to the car wash. I washed it, brought it home. As you can see, put it up here and stored it. And I'm like, I'm going to worry about this shit in the springtime. So... I, I keep telling him you should have stored this car two months ago, and now that you didn't, you're you know you're getting all these problems with the car. So then he's like, "You're right, Greg. You're right. This Friday I'm storing it." <laughs> and so basically, I posted a picture on Instagram, and I wrote basically, "The car is going into storage. I'm upset. I hear a rear suspension clunk that I can't diagnose." And somebody commented, and they said, "Check your sunroof seal." And I first thought, I'm like. What is this guy smoking? How is my rear smoking suspension? Good shit. My rear suspension clunk could be a sunroof seal. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Didn't think much of it. Then I started uh, Googling on the Club Lexus forums and on Facebook. I posted a video. And sure enough, people started commenting. My uh, On the forums, it was basically the GS models, 350, 450. Um, people were like, I've had a, this clunk that sounds like it's the rear suspension. I took it to the dealer. They diagnosed it as the sunroof seal. That's bad. That gets worn and creates this sun, sound that mimics <laughs> the clunk of the rear suspension. And I'm like, my mind is blown. Like, how yeah. could a Lexus have a sunroof issue that causes a suspension like noise? So hey, you get what you pay for, dog. You should have bought a Bugatti. Should have bought a freaking <laughs> Honda Civic and called it a day, but. Anyway, did some more research. Sure enough, multiple, multiple, multiple people said that it is the the sunroof seal. So I you're really be, dragging this explanation out, dog. I'm gonna be going and replacing <laughs> the sunroof seal. So stay tuned. For so that. We'll, we'll include a video here of him pressing against the sunroof, and you can hear for yourself the stupid clunking noise on a car that's like three or four years old. And just have a listen. How does a sunroof seal go bad? I don't know, but it is what it is, you know? Yep. You never know what you get. <laughs> anyway, let's drop that sunroof thing. Um, what else we got to talk about, man? That's it. That's pretty much where we're at right now? That's, that's where the point is. We're putting the car away. It's done. All right, so... To be continued next year. One thing I'm disappointed in, we didn't hit up the track. Obviously, you had your own issues it's with the, of the paint, paint, with all this that's stuff. That's what delayed the whole so, year. Everything you know, just failed from the there. The check engines, yeah, we didn't hit up the track, but hopefully next season we can go to a dang track event mm -hmm. and just do a couple of runs, see the quarter mile times. We'll probably take these uh, factory wheels, right, because they're smaller, yeah. they're, they're lighter, and the tires are wearing out. So we'll probably take those to the track. That's what I want to see. I think they said the car runs factory a 12.8, if I remember correctly, you know, That's what it runs. under, I think a 12.8, man, I could be wrong. I, I hope it's 12.8, but it might be a little more. We'll see. But uh, we'll see what you get down, you know, what you put down, because you've never been to the track, mm -hmm. you know, you don't, you drive it like a baby most of the time. <laughs> so that's something I want to see next season. Uh, tell me what your, you know, best thing you did to, with the car this year was and the worst thing you did, either whether it's mod or experience. Or not, we know the experience. Yeah. Just, you know. I think it's hard to say. I think the best thing that I put on was the, the Josie exhaust because I got that low end torque back. So the car is a lot more pleasurable to drive around town for sure. What about what? What would you say to new Lexus uh, fans or owners <clears throat> that are looking to buy a GSF 
or RCF. I mean, if you guys are looking to get into this car, stock, the car is A, stands too high. It's too much wheel gap. <clears throat> it's too quiet. It definitely needs an exhaust. Personally, I feel for the money that you pay, new, it's way underpowered. Use, if you get a good deal, that's, you know, Yeah, new is way overpriced. Way, way overpriced, way overpriced man. <clears throat> So, I mean... Do your research if you like the Lexus brand, the reliability. Reliability. Uh, hey, don't forget, this is just our opinion, and you modded the car, so you know you can't blame Lexus for the problems you're having after That's modding true. the That's car. That's true. That's true. So, but I mean, you know, it's fairly a decent car, but make your own choices. But I mean, the, what, what mind boggles me the most is, you know, and I see it from you and all these other people. What is the possibility for the car you know you got your intake you got your exhaust you got your headers and then you got to pay an arm and a leg get a tune you know and that's all you can get you get your you know 40 50 60 horsepower you know you probably lose some low-end power from all that and that's all you get you know yep. and then you start digging with anything else you could find because there's nothing else to do with the car you know you like you you're you're vinyl wrapping everything or you're tinting the tail lights or you're tinting this because there's nothing else that's keeping you entertained unless you got buku bucks and you get a supercharger or something and you know go all out with these cars but that's not that's not practical you know so my opinion you know if you if you live in a city this is over this is too much car for the city yeah. the gear ratios are too long way too long to enjoy the car in in city streets mm -hmm. if you live further out suburbs long roads you know wherever be better open her up pull you know go through the rpms if you live in the city my personal opinion get something four five six cylinder turboed get that instant power instant mm -hmm. torque, long run torque maybe low uh, shorter gear ratios you know like that's where the fun is at you know it's like you know a lot of people overbuild the car you know whether it's turbocharging it and making too much power even with turbos you go up to stage three stage yeah, four bigger turbo you, you lose so much low end yeah. power that drivability you really got to see and 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 dial in what the car's purpose is where you're using it you know oh you bought a corvette but how many guys go to the racetrack with a corvette you bought a gsf it's a city car a to b you know mm -hmm. and a lot of people like i said they're overbuilding cars and and by overbuilding them they're making them less practical and less usable for their purpose yeah but let's basically end this video here what he said is true but don't get me wrong i do love the car i'm just very annoyed with all the issues yeah, and clunks that i've had bad year. it was a bad, bad year, year for me i'm hopefully 2020 is a better year for me and the car and no issues so i don't have to jack it up anymore but on a good note last year i think we made this video i think you were just crossing a thousand subscribers yeah right now you're just about to hit three thousand yep, subscribers like I think i'm like 60 subscribers away from so, three thousand so if you guys haven't subscribed yet please make sure you do and i really appreciate it and you know same here go to bully kit subscribe to bully kit we just picked up a welder we got the spray yep. guns more painting and you know i do some videos of his car as well and i make my own opinions because you know i have a lot of opinions on a lot of things um next season 2020 what can we see from bullets garage we're gonna go to the drag strip i want to go to the track and that's it <laughs> drag strip and track same thing you mean like a circuit no, drag strip is a drag strip and then like an autocross oh, yeah. type thing yeah I would, you just just stick to the drag strip straight line. You know we don't want That's no more problems. Boring. We don't want no more problems. We don't want no uh, upper control arm snapping, right? Yeah. Shit. Yeah, man. Well, hope you guys enjoyed this video. We're gonna end it right here. It's a long video. I got a, a lot of editing to do between two cameras and all these audio sources. Uh, if you're a Lexus fan, man, hope you guys enjoy his channel. He's got some, you know, always some content. He spends a lot of money that he doesn't get reimbursed by YouTube. So, like I said, like that video, smash that like, share it so he can keep growing and maybe, you know, provide better content, better modifications for you guys. And that's all I got to say for today. Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy, happy holidays. Happy New Year. Hopefully we get this video up by then. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, catch Take you care. on the next one. Peace. All right, guys, let's go because it's far raising.